Hi guys! Today we are once again in Greece and once again I have to thank Jimmy the Blaster who is becoming my recruiter number one here at the Electronic Corner. Of course he plays in Preemptive Strike 0.1 and uh, now you can see on the top right of your screen the link to watch the interview I did too. But today we're actually here to talk to Sakis who is Nano Infect. So, no more wasting time, let's go to meet him. Hello Sakis, good to see you, thanks a lot for accepting my invitation, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you Sergio, uh, thank you for asking me first to, to be a part of this. I yeah, love your well, show, I've watched every episode. Really? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. very good. That's very good to know, <laughs> thanks a lot. Great now, job. Now, let, let's start. Let's start immediately. And um, so since you watch all my show, you know that, okay, the last question is always the same, but very often also the first question is the same. And in this case, it is because nano infect sounds kind of, of scary and interesting, you know, to me. So I'm kind of curious, how did you come up with that name? <laughs> well, at first I must say that um, when the band started, uh, I was only supposed to do the, the vocals. Uh, I wasn't even supposed to compose because I had no background whatsoever on how to compose electronic music. So the other guy, Dennis, uh, had so many projects here and there. And uh, he started giving none in fact whatever was left from the other band. And I told him, you know, we can't work like that. We must do something pretty nice music so i remember the first band band name he uh, he mentioned was like sato masochistic i'm like dude <laughs> no no <laughs> it's not working and then i suggested uh, two names one of uh, was excription which uh, i still love as a band name and eventually want to do a side project as excription and uh, so spoiler and um, the second one was a nanotechnological infection because I'm always into sci-fi movies and cyborgs and you know stuff like that and um, he said yeah it's nice but we have to make it shorter so like okay nano infect because can you imagine a band called oh, I like nanotechnological infection it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not going to work either People way. Shorten it anyway, yeah, too long for the CD. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we switched to to non infect, and um, I've been meaning for years to change that, to be honest, mm. into excription. So I decided to honestly go with a new project. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And now, speaking of infection, you know, um, so far I have interviewed about like 20 artists for the Electronic Corner and uh, those with whom I, I spoke about the pandemic times, uh, either on or off camera, they basically, they all told me the same thing. In general, personally, of course, it was terrible. We don't need to, to remind why. But uh, in terms of creativity, it was maybe their best period ever because the combination True. of having so much time to spend at home doing nothing and the fear and the anger caused by the uncertainty of the situation caused like a, an, an explosion of musical creativity. And it was the same exactly. thing as, as well, actually. Yeah. You know, in, in my case, with books, not music, but still it looks like every creative person in a way was... Um, infected let's say with that yeah. so i was i was wondering if it was the same for you uh at first i must say that um those who know me in person know that i'm a bit of um let's say like a hermit uh up to to the point of uh, let's say misanthropy a bit so when i was working at a photocopy shop and they told me we have to close down i was like yes so no more people for me. And um, indeed, uh, I became very creative. That was the point where I decided to, uh, let's face it, everybody knows it, that uh, Nano Infect were on a big break until then. But during the pandemic, I, create, I started recreating music, old songs, 
uh, I started composing new stuff. Uh, I created other stuff like um, dungeon synth albums. I, I released uh, two albums, two dungeon synth albums during the pandemic. Uh, so yeah, I, I had a feeling where my sleep schedule sure, was turned upside down. So I had to create music at night, which works best for me. It was definitely a very creative time for you. Yeah. So um, in your lyrics, it's obvious that the church with the capital C is not a friend of yours, to put it mildly, let's say. So <laughs> like the, the, the yeah. song Sex Abuse, for example, is about the, the church sexual abuse cases. And then we have titles like uh, Jesus is dead, I'm the devil, and, and so on. So I was wondering, uh, did you ever run into trouble in Greece or, or abroad because of your attitude, let's say, toward the church? Or you never had well, problems? No, actually, there is a funny story. Um, I am against church. Um, I'm not against, uh, let's say, Christianity as uh, teachings. It's fine, but it's not for me, you know? Uh, but the whole church, sex abuse, all the, the money, and I'm like, come on, that has, that has nothing to do with the actual teachings of the Bible. Uh, so I was um, in uh, Ukraine for a tour, and um, I wanted to visit a very specific church in, I think it was um, uh, Lviv. Because there's um, the, let's say, remainings of a um, Greek saint. Uh, Athanasius, which is actually my real name. Psyche derives from Athanasius. Uh, you know, kind of mummified and stuff. And I wanted to go and visit because I also like um, I like the atmosphere when you're in the church. But uh, I wasn't wearing any upside down crosses. I covered my tattoos, uh, just plain black all the way, you know, out of respect. And uh, there was a crazy woman who started yelling inside the church uh, to my friends, speaking in Ukrainian language, and I couldn't even understand what she was saying. So suddenly, people gather around us. I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And uh, she started screaming that uh, he shouldn't be here. Why is he here? My friend Andrew said because he's Greek and he wanted to visit. And he said, no, he's not Greek. I'm like, so I suddenly turn in English and I'm like, Andrew, what the fuck? So everybody was like, he's war in church. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. you know? <laughs> and, and I swear, Andrew actually grabbed me and started running because people were trying to I chase see. me. So, but in general, yeah, everybody knows that I'm a fanatic uh, anti-church guy. So uh, you did a cover of a Hellraiser by Suicide Commando some years ago. And how did you get this opportunity and how did it make you grow as an artist? Well, actually, it was my third try. There is another Hellraiser version, an older one, uh, where uh, I played that. I always play that song as uh, the last song before I. I go, you know, off stage, and I, I, wa I was feeling that something was missing, uh, so I had to remake it. And um, I remember uh, Johan texted me. He was like, "Wow!" I'm like, "Thank you so much! <laughs> Thank you so much!" So um, uh, it's like uh, for me, it's like uh, one of the it was the sec third something like that uh, industrial song that I ever listened to because there was a friend of mine who wanted to take me to a club back then called Underworld I'm like yeah sure let's go but what's industrial I have no idea what you're talking about so um, uh, she played uh, the Cyclone 9 Clinic song from the, the first album uh, and I was like why I've never heard that style before. I like it so much. And uh, the moment we went downstairs, because it was like um, Underworld. So so we went downstairs, and I remember Hellraiser was, we just started playing by the DJ. I'm like, wow. Wow. So I immediately fell in love with Suicide Commando, uh, bought all of his uh, CDs, vinyls, T-shirts. I'm like, I'm like a groupie. 
And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to remake Hellraiser. I've also made uh, See You in Hell, uh, Mensch's Fresser, uh, Evil Door. I love, I love actually covering Suicide Commando. Um, I also did a couple of other songs. So um, I suggested him. I was talking with Johan and I said, why don't you do like a tribute CD? Because there are so many bands uh, covering your stuff. And he was like, hold on a minute. So he immediately texted uh, out of line and they came to an agreement. So when he released uh, the Forest of the Impaled album, he said, okay, we're doing this. So I want your tracks. And if you can help me, you know, some other bands, you know, the covered band, I'm like, sure. Yeah, okay. And um, it's still, I don't know if it's good, but it's still my number one song on Spotify. Not I my know, song. I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's yeah not my song. But yeah, but then again, you know, people who are going to listen to Suicide Command on Spotify will also listen to my song. So it works. But uh, yeah, uh, most of the people know me by Hellraiser which again is not good for me but it's working you know it helps me out <laughs> now if you could compose a soundtrack for an existing movie or series which one would be and why oh all right uh i definitely go for silent hill or i would go and try again uh for nightmare on elm street because I actually fall asleep song was um was nominated to be like um on the movie soundtrack back then when it was the remake and stuff like that but unfortunately uh it didn't happen so either elm street or silent hill so uh, what gear do you mostly use in your studio hardware software what kind of stuff well, um, mostly as it comes for uh, nano effect, I use a MIDI keyboard and um, I got so far like four or five, but um, a student of mine, because I teach uh, sound engineering, um, sent me this as a gift and I'm pretty sure I'm going to start using it very soon, the Keylab uh, 49. Hmm. Nice students you which have. Is yeah, yeah, I know. That's how they pass the exams, you know. Ah, okay. <laughs> and it's great because it's also like, it works like a jaw controller over here. And there's a screen where I can use my plugins directly from the screen over here and make changes and, you know, the automations and stuff like that. Uh, for the vocals, even when it's uh, just recording or live, I use the Digitech uh, VX400. Uh, uh, I spent a lot of time trying to make it work because it was I used like pitch shifter, reverb, some delay, distortion, uh, compressors, uh, EQ, everything. So naturally, the first four or five shows, it sounded like shit. And uh, I kept coming back and switching details. So it's absolutely fine right now. Um, I love my VX400 actually, and I work, I also record with that in any case. But from time to time, I might use different techniques like the metal zone, the distortion pedal for the guitar. I've actually used it for vocals, and it sounds uh, killer. Um, uh, I also have this one as a jaw controller. And uh, funny enough, I use a four-track uh, Behringer uh, little mixer. Though uh, many people laugh about the, the brand, like, oh, Behringer. I'm like, yeah, it works. <laughs> I don't care if you like yeah. it or not. Well, quite, quite a few people who I interviewed in the past year are, are using their products. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I actually like uh, to send... Uh, from the sound interface, which is a SSL, by the way, huge SSL fan. Uh, I send it to the to the Behringer tracker and uh, then record it back with some EQ and details to make it more 
organic because I mostly use uh, VST plugins. And I've got this new console over here. I'm not sure if you can see it, that one. Uh, mm -hmm. Tasca Model 24. Yep. Absolutely love that, but still haven't used it as much as I would like. And uh, now these days I decided to go typical less is more and pretty much delete every VST instrument I got, Nexus and what have you. And I only used Serum, uh, especially the presets by the label, the brand, let's say, called Tone Pusher. Uh, because the Tone Pusher guy is a personal friend of mine. He's the guy behind uh, Natural Noise. Mm. So every single preset he has, it's right on spot, right to the point. Of course, you have to adjust some details, you know, here and there to make it fit your sound. And um, I have like four kicks that I'm using, a couple of snares that I created by myself, you know, blending other uh, snares. And um, the samples from uh, Jan from Exfusion, he has some pretty, some pretty cool samples on his website, so you can buy and work with that. But again, you know, switch them a bit so I don't sound like Exfusion. Not that mm. I wouldn't want to, but I want to sound like, you know, Nano Infect. And uh, from time to time, I might use, uh, you know, kind of very old stuff like uh, Vanguard. From time to time, I like two or three sounds that I still want to use. Uh, but eventually, I want to buy a Korg a Monologue mm -hmm. and an Axis Virus, you know, to expand my sounds. I see. Well, I, I can see that you're a neighbor of, of Zed from Siva6, which I interviewed recently, because he also said less is more and he's using Serum. So you do have things in common. <laughs> I told him about Serum, actually. I'm like, dude. Hey, George. Yeah, that's good. like, wow. So we actually, I went to his place and uh, he was like, okay, so I'll buy that. I'm like, yeah, I've tried that. It's good. So your project uses a formula that uh, I've seen is very popular in electronic music. So you're a solo in studio and a band when you play live. And um, yeah. the, the, the advantage is, is pretty obvious. I mean, being solo in studio means you can have full control from the creative side and uh, sharing the duty on stage uh, with other people is less tiring and probably also more entertaining for, for the audience. Yeah. So I can understand why a lot of people are doing that. Uh, so I want to ask you actually about the, let's say, disadvantages or difficulties or challenges, if any, of having a setup like this. So soloing studio and, and the band on stage. Yeah, well, many times um, um, you might when you work solo, uh, you can have someone. I mean, if you work with a band, you can have a main idea and have someone to maybe you know twist the idea a bit and tweak it and work around it and make it better or suggest something that's a lot better. Uh, most of the time, I'm too non-democratic when it comes to ideas from other people so i'm like yeah yeah i'm like yeah whatever so i just continue making music uh but the disadvantage of live shows is that you every now and then you might have to find a new guy to do that because uh one is might be busy and he's like oh you know i got this thing that i have to do i'm like and of course, some rehearsals, you know, here and there. And I've had people actually saying that, yeah, I rehearsed my, my stuff. So we went directly to the live show. And they were like, uh, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, you said you rehearsed, so <laughs> it's your job to know what to do. Uh, so it was a full playback show, more like a karaoke stuff. Um, but when you got more people to work with, uh, it's more expensive to go abroad, you know, with tickets and stuff. Because let's face the truth, right? Every festival wants like um, bands like N1, uh, DAF, Suicide Commando, Combi Christ, yeah. Agonoise. And so they give all the money to them, which it happens natural because they're A-level, 
you know. Uh, but then the problem is that they don't give that much attention to new bands. So if you want to play, let's say, I don't know, um, UK or Spain or France or Germany or whatever, you have to pay your own tickets. You have to pay for your rehearsals. Um, you have to pay for the accommodation. And it's like, yeah, I'll give you a hundred bucks. I'm like, why should I get a hundred bucks if I have to pay like a thousand? So for me, it makes no sense, you know, at least cover my expenses. That's all I'm asking. Don't pay me for the show. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, the main disadvantage if you have two, three, five, ten people. Well, what you said about what happens in live activities is, is very interesting because it ties perfectly with the next question, uh, which is this one. I, I would like to know your opinion on this. Um, recently, an electronic music event was cancelled in Germany due to lack of interest uh, from the audience, basically. So the, the bands were not super famous, but they were not totally unknown either. And the same happened in Italy a few months earlier. And unfortunately, it could happen anywhere, you know, even in, in, in Greece. Um, money was not the issue because the, the ticket cost like around 10 euros. And when you go out with friends on a Saturday night, for example, you can easily spend 20 or, or 30 euros. So I think that the oh, problem spend was more, more like so. a, a de definitely. Yes, I, I, I was trying to be conservative, but you're right. It could be even 50. So I think the, the problem was the, and is the, the lack of perception of people of what supporting the local music scene really means. So I, I want to ask you, what do you think could be done to make people understand that supporting the, the, the local music scene or supporting a band does not mean only to like and comment their, their post in the social media, but actually means attend live events, uh, buy their digital or physical products, merchandise and stuff like that. What what can we do maybe as musicians, you know, to, to help people and understand this? Yeah, I'm not sure because at least I know from the Greek scene, right? Um, I remember there was a pretty cool, pretty cool show. Uh, well, like Terolocost, uh, Detroit Diesel, Preemptive Strike, uh, Nano Infect, Psygnosis. And, you know, for me, it was like, yeah, let's do this. And it was like 30 people for all of these bands. Uh, but when it comes to Saturday night, where the venue was actually like a, a club playing industrial music, it was super crowded. Because I think, at least for the Greek scene, which I might talk about, uh, all they care about is like, you know, it's like a small town where they want to gossip and look like, oh, look at me, I'm wearing the most glowy clothes ever and like oh i don't like that guy who had a fight it's not actually about the scene uh as a as passionate music fans okay. i mean i know I, I i buy cds vinyls tapes t-shirts everything because i know what is supporting as a musician too uh but yeah i had a guy who said yeah i'm a big fan uh, i've downloaded everything uh, on whatever side, which is like Torrent or something. I'm like, how are you a big fan if you downloaded everything? I mean, it makes no sense to me. But uh, the thing is, uh, when it comes to to big festivals, for example, as I said before, with uh, Agonoise and all those great, seriously great bands, you're going to watch them one summer, the second summer, the third summer, but the fourth summer is going to be like, again, you know, so, uh, so you have they have to start incorporating new bands that actually, you know, have a name. I'm not saying you, you can get a band to play at uh, Wave Gothic Treffen that started one day ago. Makes no sense. Um, but the fans, as fans, mostly go because they're like, okay, I'll go. But the also the new kids. Right, they just go on YouTube and Spotify, and that's that's about it. They just and uh, I know I have on my Facebook page for Nano and so, Fate, I got like uh, so three thousand likes, right? But on Spotify, I got 
43,000 plays. I'm like, where are all these people? So what what you're saying is that like like people nowadays they tend to bo to to attend more like a clubbing nights because they can communicate with each other they can show off they there can be yeah. more like in, interaction between them while if they go to a concert unless it's a big name they actually you know they are supposed let's say to watch and listen to what's going on <laughs> so to them it, it it's yeah. a bit less interesting because there is not this kind of a uh, exchange of opinion and looks uh, between each other that is, exactly is that what you mean yeah yeah and they also don't like they, they don't okay, look or search for new bands you know they like they're like uh, they know grendel yeah. uh eisenfang xrx and that's it so we have reached the last question of the podcast as usual it's a studio demonstration question from what i understood this will be like less electronic than usual which is great because i don't mind to broaden a bit you know the the horizon of of this podcast so well let's see what you have prepared for us right so what i've been uh, meaning to show you first besides so the studio stuff uh i want to show you a way to mal or the the way that i create uh, music the ideas and how i record them so let's get right into it and uh, i'm gonna share my screen over here and go directly on uh cubase that's it so i've uh, loaded two serums uh again a bass called Hosiko and uh, a bass sound that's called SC, obviously from Suicide Commando. And again, all the presets over here are from uh, Christian and Tone Pusher. Shout out and kudos. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to have to download those, uh, download, <laughs> uh, lower those a bit over here and uh, I'm gonna use my MIDI my MIDI keyboard over here uh, I've set it up to 155 that's I work at around 130 40 55 and that's it so uh, I'm gonna start recording the first bass line Take a listen. That's it. And then I go to add that on the second bass line. Where I edit my stuff over here, you know, kind of stretch the bass lines. Or you can just, you know, copy paste all the playings, doesn't matter. But for this, I'm gonna go with the hard way just to make sure everything's right. Yep. So here's the difference. So I'll make it just one good one. Let me switch that a bit just to make sure everything's all right. Not that one. Yep. See how it's still, it sounds like it's cutting out. That's what I want to avoid. All 
right so let's just paste that or rather copy and paste that to be precise just control D and then make the same for this one over here just make it one more so I'll switch the edited with the unedited one and then I go directly to a battery with uh, the body beat kit that I've loaded and go and directly record my mostly kick snare and then I add a hi-hat and crushes and stuff like that so this is how it goes I know something went wrong over here, but I can do that. I can fix it, no problem. And uh, let's just cut that and make sure we edit it the right way. See what's going on over here. Oh, there, there there's something missing here. That's the one missing over here. So, I can. I'm gonna edit that. So, this goes on forever and ever and ever, like that. And uh, then I continue with the second part over here. I just make a two. I'll add a pre count. And then I'm just going to go with uh, copy paste stuff. I don't know why I even added that kind of... It seemed like a good idea, but it sounds shitty right now. So I'll just go to add it on the snare. And then start, you know, switching from snare to snare. Quantize it, and this is what we get. Pretty quick, and that's about it. So let's check it out without the counts and stuff. Makes me want to move, so I think I would like that. Yeah, some mistakes naturally over here and there, which you're going to edit later. So that's it. That's the way I work. Thank you, and I hope you really enjoy that. All right, so over here we got the Tascam Model 24. It's a hybrid console. I got it from uh, my buddy Unison. Excellent shop, and uh, I fucking love it actually. Then we move on to a gift I got recently from a student of mine, the Arturia Keylab 49. I'm going to be using it like a lot in the future. Excellent stuff. We move on to my first mic. That's the white one. I kept it, you know, for sentimental reasons. Uh, this is the cell with uh, metal zone, metalizer, metal math pedals. 
the Audio Technica IT 2020 microphone, the condenser one, 609 silver, the MB75 Shure, kind of uh, SM57 stuff, C2, uh, the B microphone from Behringer, uh, Shure SM58, and uh, then we continue on with the Line 6 uh, Port XT Live and the VM from Behringer. Uh, great stuff. Over here I got the Rat Pack VHS from Frank Sinatra. I knew I wanted to do be a musician. Uh, yeah, so uh, these are my most of uh, the instruments over here. Just let me focus a bit. There we go. Uh, the B series one over here is the one that uh, Nisrock sold to me. He used it for Alien Vampires and probably Aberim. Um, three bases over here, uh, an SG Epiphone and my first Les Paul Epiphone. Uh, great stuff here too for me. We move on with the Anglo Screamer 50. It's a tube uh, preamp amplifier. Uh, over here we got the my for now bearing your monitors with some stuff on the monitor for inspiration of course um, that's my screen the SSL plus 2 audio interface the 4k baton is magic I'm telling you the bearing gear uh, 2 track which is great because of the Midas preamps my Yamaha headphones of course Venom for more inspiration we continue with uh, more inspiration of course with uh, Cthulhu because I'm a huge fan Alice's DM5 drum module and the bass pod from Line 6 again great rack, great DI, great effects, great models of course an inverted cross I got an orange micro dark Soldano slow mini a uh, great one, I fucking love that. Uh, we go with one. We go on with the orange cabinet. My first or my second one? Can't remember. Crate. Uh, PV Blazer 158 VX 400 by Digitech for my vocals. Uh, PV Bandit 112 Scorpio equipped. For me, it's my favorite amplifier ever. Uh, and we we'll continue with more Cthulhu and Egyptian stuff because you know, kind of a Narlathotep fan too. And that's about it. Okay, well, thanks a lot. That was very instructive as usual, and um, I'm pretty sure people at home also enjoyed it. Now it's um, it's time to say goodbye. But you know, I made so many friends in Greece now thanks to this podcast that definitely I have to come to Athens sometime next year. So, <laughs> so I don't think George it will be the from last time. Siva and I are like. 15 minutes away so yeah exactly so two two people are very close and and then i have paradox obscure and um yeah and then gray gallows and um I, the, the most important one the guy who is always procuring all all the the, the people in uh in, in, in my show preemptive strike 0 0.1 jimmy the blaster yeah he's a myth <laughs> so yeah he's a legend he's a legend love definitely. him so he's, much and he, funny enough uh our birthday is on the same same day me and oh, really? oh yeah. okay <laughs> that, that's good to know easier for me also then <laughs> I have just to remember one less me. people to remember you know <laughs> exactly okay anyway thank you so much uh, for being with us today and um, take care till next time see you